Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with an interesting little tidbit from a guy by the name of Martin Brosman. Okay, he has been putting together an artificial intelligence designed for ham radio. Okay, he invited me to try it. So I did. I sent him a question. This was back July. I said, I have a 300 picofarad capacitor. What value of inductance will make it resonate at 10 megahertz? And it shows all its work. It comes up with the, the right formulas here. It comes all the way down here, shows all the work, and comes up with the answer. So if it's gone astray somewhere, you can see where it is. Let me do another one. I have some number 20 varnished wire, okay, and a one and one half inch outer diameter plastic core for this thing. How many turns do I need to put in to create a 12 microfarad inductor? Well, it gives us the basic recipe for inductance, and then it starts putting down all the things that it has numbers for, and then typical diameter, so on and so forth, down here to where it is telling me I need 11 turns of number 20 AWG wire around your 1.25 inch outer, outer diameter plastic core to achieve an inductance of 12 Henry in a tightly wound single layer coil. Let's find out. Now I'm gonna get a, oh, make a big enough hole that we can get the wire through it easily with the quarter inch. Okay, we're gonna take this and we're not going to drill all the way through. We're just going to drill one. And I'm going to just put in another hole here. Okay, so we're going to take our wire. Okay, I'm going to stick this in here. Make it go outside like this. Okay, now we need 11 turns. Okay, that's one. Okay, now what we're going to do, this is, they've got to be tightly bound. So I'm just going to get some scotch tape out and tightly bind them. Then I'm going to drill a closer hole for this wire to go up. I don't want it to unravel on me. Okay, now we need another hole. Okay. Now I'm gonna take this and thread it through. Now let's just get this as tight as we can get it. We'll put some more tape down. Okay. Get this as close together as we can. Yeah, so the leads are right up against each other. By the way, the form of coil that I'm putting together here is called a solenoidal coil. This is the kind of coil that's used to pull a relay up and down. And the coil that does that is called a solenoid. Uh, nowadays you don't see these so much. They're more wrapped around ferrite beads. Okay, now we need a little sandpaper. Okay, what we're doing here with the sandpaper is just running it through so we can get the varnish off. Yeah. Soldered on some extensions to those wires. And I'm not really positive just how well that's going to work. Now, there are issues with the coil. I don't have the windings right up on top of each other. And that will make a difference. I'm getting six microhenries, which is half what the calculations are. I don't see a problem with that because, I mean, this is a very jury-rigged setup. Okay, now here's something that's gonna make it change. I'll put this metal thing in the middle here. How about this big metal thing in the middle? It changes it a little bit, but not much. Okay, so this is measuring as a six microhenry coil. 11 turns. Let's just count the turns, shall we? Okay. 
You saw a few steps about the building of the coil, and then we had a horrible time measuring it. I've got this uh, bought from Amazon. This is a handheld LCR meter from Uni-T. And there's the coil right there. And I've got those turns squashed just as heavily as I can. And it only says six microhenries rather than the 12 we were hoping for. But how close is that? That's actually pretty good for electronics what you will often do is you put a coil usually on a toroidal core okay and you try and get the the turns all the right width and everything and then next to it is a capacitor that tunes it is a tuned circuit or a tank circuit and this takes care of whatever slot might be in that coil now i could have put something wrong in there this box of wire so CMS Magnetics Magnet Wire 20 EWG. Okay, so that's what we used in the formula. There's quite a bit more for, for other things going on. Now the Q of the coil could be quite low. I'm measuring it at its highest frequency. Okay, six microhenries. This is the Q of the coil, which is not high. Um, and we can change the frequency around. There's a 10 kilohertz. Still coming up a much higher Q now. And we can even go to 100 kilohertz. And for whatever reason, it's not measuring. What this shows is that when you get parts that you think are one value, they will invariably be slightly different from that model. When you go to wind something yourself, follow the instructions, there's usually some way of tuning it. Sometimes you spread the turns apart, sometimes you push them closer together, and you get different inductance values. So we tried a few different things, and we're off by a factor of 50% from where it should be. I don't like that, but uh, it looks like that's the reading we're going to get. Anyway, there you have it. We tried. We made something. It was not what we thought it was. We could modify it with more turns so that the meter would read more. You can't get them any closer together than they are. I've got them right butted up next to each other. Now the Q in there is a measure of the resistance that would be in a tank circuit, okay? Because the Q does not detune, but it does make the bandwidth broader. So a wider bandwidth, you get a different effect. So Martin, who put this thing together, encourages you to try it. It is available at, and we'll put this down in the bottom below as well as on the screen, chatgpt.com slash g slash g hyphen r cap f a l j w cap r cap y cap z hyphen amateur hyphen radio hyphen ham hyphen radio hyphen answers hyphen virtual hyphen Elmer. So rolls off the tongue just right for you. Uh, it's in, ex in an experimental stage and I'm sure when he gets more into it, he'll have a more direct address. But give that a try. We gave it a try and came up with, uh, oh, a coil that just didn't quite work. But we were by factor of two. Now in electronics, when you're choosing components, it's not unusual to have things be off by that much. In fact, transistor, the transistor alpha is the amplification factor of it, and it varies wildly from transistor to transistor to transistor in the same batch. So you can't design around alpha. What you design around is beta, which has to do with the amount of current that comes in from the emitter lead and in from the base lead and goes out the collector. And it's a lot less variable 
between transistors. So you can use more standard values of beta. So and, and, and a lot of components like that, I think what they do is they make resistors, measure them, and then mark them. <laughs> so now one of the things, you notice that I had to change frequency on this thing here. A coil is a DC short, but as soon as you start alternating current, you start getting a buck current back that, that lowers the amount of current. And the amount of current that's going through here at any given time has to do with the frequency. So what the meter does is it measures the inductance in the circuit and from that backtracks out to find the actual inductor values. So you go from a reactive thing to going back through the formulas till you find L, which is the inductance of the coil, which is a property of the coil and it should not vary with frequency, but it does. Because as you know, and I've got these uh, windings fairly closely held here. There's capacitance between those windings that can actually be measured. And in fact, at a certain frequency, this will be a tuned circuit because it has both inductance and capacitance. Lots of fun things going on. Uh, there's some great people out there who make lots of things. And I'm sure one of them is going to come back to me and say, you forgot this. And I'll go, yeah, I did. So I'll keep this and we'll come back to it at a later time. So until then, 73.